For me, it's five seconds later. I click stop and I click on the last video, click start recording now. Hello, internet. Um, this is a funny little three part series. I should describe it as funny. Hopefully, I'm amusing. Um, a three part series on how do I update HTML, right? I know about this great thing called HTML, and I've learned about this greater thing, maybe, uh, different purposes. Uh, not greater, but also a great thing called JavaScript. And I want to combine the two to make dynamic web pages where users can take actions and the, and the DOM is updated. So in video one, we did it with plain old vanilla JS. In video two, we, you, we did the same thing in less code. And actually, because it was so much little code, we did even more. So it's even better than the previous one. And it took much less code, it is, I think, more readable. I, don't, I, I think no one would argue that three lines of text there is more readable than, than what this one line is doing. Once you know the languages, obviously, you have to <laughs> have that literacy. Um, but yeah, scanning over this is more difficult than scanning over this. Right? jQuery is great. But these approaches are basically the same, and they share some of the same problems. Um, one of those problems is things that I've mentioned a couple times, where we, like, not only do we kind of have to like mess up our HTML with all these classes, classes are originally meant for styling. And if you know any CSS, and you, you need to to know jQuery, um, but if you know any CSS, you know it's used to say, oh, I want this text blue. I want to make that bigger. You know, I want the header to be sticky on top of the page so that when you scroll, it's always there or whatever. And I want the footer on the bottom, right? Those are the kinds of things you use CSS for. It's for layout and for styling. That's why it's uh, cascading styling sheets. It's for styling. Um, and when you start mixing up your, your JavaScript with your CSS, you can get into trouble. Um, and it just kind of, you have to remember, you know, you can make typos here. What if you typoed player strength one time or something, right? There's, there's more room for error. Angular removes all that. It's like, no, 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 you don't need any of this stuff. You don't need to mess up your, your HTML with all these funny things, um, which means you can't make the mistake of getting styling mixed in there. And you also can't make the mistake of, of making typos in the same way. You're going to have much better support from your, your IDE on you know, making sure that everything is spelled out correctly and everything. Um, so yeah, it just removes a ton of opportunity for programming mistake in general uh, to use these frameworks um, like Angular. And again, React Redux is another one. Vue.js is another one. I mentioned those in the first video as briefly as I <laughs> mentioned them just now. There are a lot of these frameworks. Um, they all behave super similarly. So we're not going to copy paste. Before, I copied the vanilla JS into the jQuery, and that was great. I'm actually going to minimize these. We're not going to need them all. It's going to be so 100% totally different. Um, you know what? Maybe I was a little, a little jump the gun there. We will copy the HTML, but we're going to end up changing a lot of it. So let's do that. Um, the first thing you might notice, though, is well, you might notice a couple things. One, um, look at how many more files. Like, what are all these crazy files here, right? Before we had an index, uh, we have the jQuery library, which we didn't write, um, and we have our main JS. And there's this git ignore. That's for because it's online, and you don't need that. Um, but really, your program is two files, right? What are all of these? What's all this bananas nonsense? This all comes with Angular, right? Just like we didn't write jQuery min JS, we didn't write all this stuff. Um, this is provided by um, Angular, and it comes with its own index.html, because that's where all web pages start, um, unless you're using a, a, server-side, PHP, something, whatever, C-sharp, I don't know. Um, but for any single page app, for sure, uh, like what we've been making, we're going to have index.html as our front. But it's like it's different. It's got all this other stuff in here. I didn't write any of this. Um, and actually, when I went ahead and wrote um, this one, I copied what Angular had already made for me to get like the head, the meta. You do want all those for reasons mentioned in the first video. Um, but uh, yeah, it built this all for us. And it's got like this funny, what's this app root thing, right? I didn't write these. This is for um, some uh, better mobile experience. So it doesn't, you may have loaded up some pages on your phone and it's like a super shrunken down version of, you know, it's like it tried to fit the whole web page like it went on a desktop monitor, but shrunken down your screen, right? This line prevents that. Um, sorry, this one is viewport one. Um, right, so there's all this other stuff, and it's got like it's got like all this, all these, there's all this code, there's all this stuff. Oh my goodness, right? You kind of don't need to worry about it in in one sense because it's Angular, but when you do more Angular stuff, like you do need to. Um, and Angular uses a lot of command lines, so Angular um, cannot be run. Uh, and I have it somewhere. Uh, this is the right one, I think. Sorry, I'm on a different monitor. Yeah, yeah. So because Ang Angular is like so crazy. 
sorry, so crazy JS heavy using JavaScript that isn't even available on browsers. Um, but it compiles it all into JavaScript that browsers can't understand. Um, and actually what uh, is being used by Angular is TypeScript, which is why you have these .ts extensions rather than .js extensions. Um, and TypeScript compiles into JavaScript, but it is, it's what's called a superset of JavaScript because anything that you can do in JavaScript, you can do in TypeScript, but then there's also other new syntax that's TypeScript that, that isn't found in JavaScript. Um, which makes it more handy for programming, makes it less handy for browsers, because browsers understand JavaScript. They don't understand other weird stuff you made up and happens to call TypeScript, right? And it doesn't know what that is. Um, so Angular compiles that into plain JavaScript uh, to run. And in order to support all this, this extra crazy infrastructure, and this is already potentially scaring you away, um, you have to do some command line stuff. One nice advantage is, I didn't press F5, you may have noticed. Anytime you change anything in here, um, it just goes and reloads. It listens for changes to your code and reloads the page. You can disable that. Sometimes that's annoying, but more often it's useful. I tend to just leave it on and deal with it when it happens to be inconvenient because it's convenient like 90% of the time. Um, so yeah, that's the thing that's doing. It's watching the files for changing, reloading it, um, and it just uh, does a ton of stuff. So anyway, let's start making it... Um, well, so let's, again, sorry, talk about like, so what is this? We've got our index over here. We've got our app component over here. What's that about? What, what's all this? What, you know, what are all these files? It, the other frameworks are like this too. React is like this. Vue is like this. They are components. They're, they're based on components. Like in the same way that you have, um, let's go back to our tag, right? Like you have a, a span tag, and a span tag means whatever it means. And you have a DL tag, and a DT tag, and a header tag, right? All those tags mean things. Uh, Angular, and React, and Vue.js, I'm pretty sure Vue.js works this way as well. I haven't used it as much. But they let you make up your own tags. You're like, oh, that's cool. Tags, I want to I want to do tags too. So you can make a tag called app root. And this is another thing that um, Angular is doing. There is no tag called app root, but Angular turns it into JavaScript and HTML that browsers can understand. Um, but it gives you the convenience of being able to think of things in terms of tags. Uh, and the app component actually is a tag. It's app root. Here it is. So whenever you say app root in HTML now, it means do whatever this app component is, which is all this stuff. So I mean, you know, we can demonstrate that. We can take out app root here, and now we don't have. I don't have to press F5. We don't have anything on our page, right? We could say hello. We could we could put stuff here, um, but we can also use a component. And the reason, once you get like crazy into Angular, it's so useful because, for example, here, whoops we have our stats. You might easily imagine that you're like, oh, stats, I'm going to put those all kinds of different places. I want to make a new thing called app stats, and I'll make that be a new component. We're not going to get into making components for, for the part, for, you know, for the purposes of this tutorial. Um, that's more advanced, but that's kind of the power, uh, that's one of the powers of, of, of Angular in these frameworks, is being able to kind of take things you're going to reuse you know, in the same way that we reuse functions in JavaScript. I want to be able to call this function again. In HTML, you can say, oh, I'm going to use this all this HTML again. I want to wrap that all up into a single HTML tag. Um, and then you can, like, pass data around, whatever. It's great. It's cool. Um, we won't go into all that here. Um, the other thing about, uh, that's the wrong thing. The other thing about um, components is they also come with TypeScript. So, you know, a JavaScript tag, bold, could bold some text, but it couldn't, like, also wiggle that text. You would need JavaScript to do that. Well, you could make, like, app wiggle and then code up the JavaScript. You know, all the components have an HTML side and a, and a TS side and also some CSS side. So you can totally customize how each component works. And again, just instantly reuse that. You're like, yeah, hey, here's my app wiggle component. It has all the JavaScript it needs to actually make the text wiggle or whatever you want to do. Um, so it's very useful. Um, we're going to use that. Again, we're just going to kind of do it super simply. Um, we're not going to make multiple components, which you're going to do. We're not going to make, if you're going to do this big, you would put your game data somewhere else. But Let's start there. Let's make our game. Uh, what do we call it on the on the uh, here is like game object game state. Let's make our game state thing here. Um, yeah, TypeScript is going to get annoyed about things. Uh, so yeah, yeah, well, uh, yeah. Uh, game state is going to be here. Sorry, I was trying to think about how we want to do this. So this is a class. Classes are a thing that weren't in JavaScript for a long time. They are now. Uh, the newest version of JavaScript is called ES6, and there's a lot of new features of ES6. Classes are one of them. Uh, one of the advantages of TypeScript is um, that 
classes are available in latest browsers, but they're not available in other browsers. And this is different from a CSS class. I don't think we should talk too much about it because it's a whole other thing. But I guess what's important is, you know, as before when we said, um, you know, here's something, we get like a special, I mentioned, we get a special jQuery object that has like an on function on it, right? That you can call it and call dot on in this, on this fancy JavaScript object. We can make our own things. We could make our app component have an on function and do whatever it wants to do. I need to disable this like squiggliness, sorry, because that's just going to get annoying for um, purposes of, uh, there we go. Um, <laughs> we need to have red text all over the place. There's better ways to handle that, but that'll do for now. Um, right, you can make your own functions on this. You can put your own little data in here. Uh, so it's a way of, again, just another way of containing things within within a space, right? Within this app root tag component, we can have data, we can have HTML, we can have functions, we can have all these things. And those all go in this class for the JavaScript side. So we're not actually going to want an on function. Um, but I think we will want our load game function. We'll make the load game functions before. Uh, the other function we had was set up event handlers. We don't need to do that. Uh, Angular is going to handle event handlers for us. The other thing we don't need to do is update DOM. Uh, Angular is also going to handle updating the DOM for us. So we'll just have new game. Sorry, we called it new game. So we'll make a new game function here. Um, and the new game is going to operate on the game state. Uh, for anything that's a property of an of of a object, so we have you know this class app component, there's going to be an app component object. Um, you need to refer, like you could make a variable here called let game state, and it could be a string, I don't know. But that's a different game state than that game state. If you want to refer to, right, and then here we might say, okay, game state equals Abby or something. Um, but if we want to refer to the game state out here, we need to use this, this dot game state. And that's, I don't know, maybe that seems annoying. Again, it comes naturally when you do it a lot. Um, so this game state, when we start up a new one, uh, we're gonna have the name be, what do we say? We had Abby, we'll just copy this. We'll copy that over. We'll just use the exact same one as before. Here is, um, yeah, here, here's our new game state. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we need to actually call that function once. Um, in our case, again, it's for an Angular project that we're doing this kind of a weird way, but this constructor function that came with this component, right? I didn't write that, that just came with, with Angular. Um, that gets called when this app component is created, instantiated. So like here we said app.root or app-root, that's this guy. Every time there's an app root, we get a whole different copy of, of the application. Um, and actually, maybe I'll show off how that can be a little interesting. So anyway, and when that when it gets run and it's ready and everything, um, it will call this constructor method. Um, all classes have a constructor method, and, and it always is run. Um, and you can see it's reloading over here in the background. I don't know if you've noticed it flickering over there. Um, but so anyway, so this is analogous, I guess, is what I was getting at. This is analogous to our wait for the DOM to be loaded function. What do we want to do? Well, we don't need to set up event handlers, as we'll see shortly, but we are going to call new game. So here's our new game, this not new game. Uh, the other thing we need to do is um, not here, but here we want to fill in the name. And here is where Angular and Vue and React and Redux and all those things are amazing. Um, rather than using plain old HTML, uh, I don't know what they actually call it. Other th other frameworks that will, will name their their template engine like Twig or Blade or whatever. Um, I don't actually know. Handlebars is another one. I don't know if Angular has like an explicit name. There surely must be somewhere, and I just don't know what it is. But it's not plain HTML. You can do more stuff, right? I mean, you can use fake tags, for example. You can also do this little double curly braces thing. Um, and inside there, you can put, you, you're basically now talking to the TypeScript side. So we can call this new game function. We can do any kind of TypeScript we want within this context, including get this game state. So that's what we're going to do. We want the game state name in here. So all we have to do is type game state dot name. Uh, and we'll see that when it reloads. Welcome, Abby. Uh, and that is what we need. So this is why I was saying we don't need to update the DOM. It does it for us anytime anything changes. Um, we don't need any more all of these uh, we have the strength. We don't need these um, you know spans that don't even need to be in here kind of polluting the DOM if you want to think about it that way with, with classes that someone might accidentally think is a good idea to style. Um, we don't need any of that anymore. Uh, and we don't have to write any JavaScript to go and find these things. They just get populated. So, right, this is amazing. And again, I, I mentioned before, I think, and I don't remember if it was the first video or the second, but when these things change, Angular is super smart and only updates what needs to be updated. Um, our function is kind of dumb. Every time we change the game state, we're like, well, we need to update the DOM 
I don't know what exactly was changed. Sometimes it's only one thing, sometimes it's everything. So let's make our update DOM function just kind of change everything. Um, if you want it, and you know, on a small scale, fine, right? We're not losing a lot of time by doing this. Like, it's going to be fine. But if your project is really big and you have a lot of components on the page and everything's moving around, you don't want to just like be redoing the whole page every time. So I'm like waving my hands with huge motions, but you can't see that. <laughs> um, because that's going to start to get inefficient, right, at scale. Um, and so you would have to start breaking these out. You'd be like, well, update DOM, but maybe you pass in what elements you, you want it to, you know, just the strength part, or maybe make update DOM only the strength part, or, you know, whatever. You, you find some solution to only update the part you want. You don't need to in Angular. Angular has solved that problem for you. And it's the same thing as jQuery, right? jQuery was like, oh, here's the thing you often want to do. You want to add event handlers. Why type add event handler? Just type dot on. Oh, you want to do it on one or three or 10 or however many elements? We don't care. We've simplified that for you. Same thing here. What's something you want to do? Oh, you want to update content on a web page based on what's happening in JavaScript, right? We've handled it for you. <laughs> um, and in a, in a nice way that you can't, I mean, we could write something as smart as Angular um, in jQuery or vanilla JS. Angular team has, <laughs> right? They made Angular. Um, but that would be a lot of work. So why would we? We wouldn't rewrite jQuery either. Let's use something that someone has already built. Um, we're also not going to need this ID for similar reasons. Um, so, and now here's the other thing we do. We want the strength potion to, um, you know, we want some sort of click handler like before. Um, and this is where when Angular first came out, I remember my my um, front end front end guy at my previous job who was doing all the design stuff. He really didn't like Angular because it seemed to him like you were dirtying up, you were you were mixing. I kind of talked about before, like separation of concerns. Don't put your JavaScript in your HTML. Well, we like we already have like on a, on a crazy deep level. Actually, Angular doesn't keep your HTML at all. It turns it all into JavaScript and just uses JavaScript to piece together. You can do that with van with vanilla JavaScript too. You can say, oh, make a new bold tag here. Let's just go and insert one here. JavaScript reduces your whole app to JavaScript and just like produces HTML as it's needed on the fly. Um, so I don't know. It's kind of a different paradigm. I would also argue that we were making it much messier before by having all these funny classes and. We're going to put some JavaScript in our in our in our view layer. Eh, I don't know. That might make some some people unhappy. Um, we're going to call it Do Drink Strength Potion. Um, this is a convention I saw that I happen to see, so I've adopted is any um, event handlers prefix with the word do, just so that you know when, when you're looking in your TypeScript, you're like, oh, it's an event handler. I can tell because it started with the word do. Um, so we're going to do Do Drink Strength Potion, and if I typed it right, this is another nice feature of the IDE. Um, like what if I said do drink charisma potion, for example? It colors it gray because it's not being used. It's another feature of a, of a nice IDE just to instantly tell me, yeah, unused method. No one is calling this. You don't need this code, is what it's telling me. Um, also, what that tells me, you know, if I had typoed this and been like Strigoth or something, you know, mixed up the order letters, well, first of all, it also has some spell check built in, but also it would be gray and I'd be like, oh, I named that the wrong thing. Um, so, I don't know, other little nice bits of having a, a nice IDE. Um, so, when someone does that, we want to increase the strength as before. Um, why are you angry? Unresolved variable strength. Did I type it wrong? Did I? I don't know why it's angry. Um, pretty sure it's going to work. Yeah, actually, I kind of know why it's angry. Um, for reasons that aren't worth getting into right now. Uh, so, Look, it works. <laughs> it's kind of what I'm getting at, right? So let's let's pull up uh, the the code and, and look at everything side by side. Where's my vanilla? Um, where's my vanilla JS? Here it is. Okay, um, and it's a little separated out, so it's in. It might be kind of weird to to make a comparison, but before what we first of all we always had to be like oh we have to attach a click handler. We need to update the DOM. Okay, game straight. Right, this is the same. We're, we're incrementing the strength, we're incrementing the strength. We don't have to worry about updating the DOM anymore. We don't need to worry about explicitly attaching event handlers. We just have, we did it over here. So we still had a line, right? We still wrote, hey, click, and here's a function name, right? So I don't know, in some ways, maybe we didn't actually save ourselves any code there. Um, but a nice thing, since we don't have to worry as much, like, here's something I was mentioning that I kind of went into before. We wouldn't want to, um, we could do the same thing here. We could we could add an, a click handler here. The reason you wouldn't want to do that in plain like in, in, in jQuery or in plain uh, vanilla JS is that you don't know if your JavaScript is loaded. The whole HTML might be loaded in, but your JavaScript hasn't loaded. And then so people are clicking this button, 
but there's nothing here. Kind of in a way that doesn't matter because in this example, like our web page doesn't do anything anyway until the JavaScript is loaded, so it kind of doesn't hurt. Um, in other cases, though, it would get you into trouble. Um, to, to be trying to execute JavaScript that doesn't yet exist or, and again, as your thing is more complicated, there's gonna be a lot of JavaScript files and you don't know which ones have loaded, right? Um, again, with all, all that goes away in Angular, so like you don't even have to worry about that anymore. It's like, I don't know, has the JavaScript loaded yet? Well, yes, because again, as mentioned, Angular builds this out of JavaScript anyway. So like all those kinds of like little things you had to worry about that meant that putting click handlers in your HTML was bad practice. It's no longer bad practice over here. Um, and I don't know, is it a little funky that you're like, oh, what calls this? I can't see the event handler, you know? I don't know, it's not as immediately tied maybe. I don't know, no, that's not true either because here you're like, well, what's a strength, what's hashtag strength potion? Oh, it's over here, right? So you still need that tying element. So yeah, I don't know what I'm saying. Don't listen to the thing I just said. Um, yeah, anyway, it's a whole different paradigm. So I guess what I was getting at is, right, some of the rules that were good practices, best practices for vanilla JS and jQuery don't really apply here because it's just a totally different paradigm of, of how do you um, do a web page like this. Um, and it's a lot less code, uh, <laughs> right, is the other thing. So w with each iteration, we, we, we've had less. Um, you know, I didn't even write all that. Someone did, I don't know, you might think that that's a bad thing. Um, it's not. All this gets compiled away into oblivion. Uh, when this is all turned into plain JS, like all this stuff just goes away. It's totally, completely transformed. Um, and you know, there's hidden stuff going on here too. How does text work in the jQuery side? We can't jump to it. It's the funny minified one anyway. Right? There's a lot of stuff going on behind the, the scenes on all of these. Um, it's just different stuff. Um, and in this case, it's stuff that is more to the point of, hey, I want a cool dynamic web page that responds to clicks and updates values and updates the DOM. It solved all those problems. jQuery was just created before people were thinking that way about websites, so it doesn't handle that in, in as good a way. Uh, I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, yeah, it doesn't handle it in as good of a way um, because that didn't exist. That no one was thinking about building pages like this in the early two thousands, which is when jQuery, you know, was really picking up. Maybe even created. I don't know the creation date. It might have been late nineties. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's an older thing. Um, so it's just different different model. So. Anyway, sum up, I guess. Here's how you make a dynamic web page using vanilla JS, Angular, or um, jQuery. Um, I don't know. I hope that's been interesting. Again, if, if you don't know any jQuery, I would, or sorry, any TypeScript, if this is kind of your first foray, I would say it's probably probably start with jQuery. Um, maybe if you are if you if you like the command line, if you're already comfortable doing stuff on the command line, um, especially, or you already know. Um, how to do some programming, maybe another language, uh, and or you want the challenge, Angular, definitely. Like, how do you make a whole project, right? Where did all these files come from? How did they get made? There's just a command line thing you run, and there's tutorials on the Angular website itself. It's like, hey, here's how you start a new project, and then it will have created all the stuff you saw before I started typing anything, right? All that empty constructor with this app component and the HTML file that had, um, you know, this app root, like it builds all that for you with, with one command. Um, and it has to go and download a bunch of stuff, <laughs> but, it, but it does it all for you. Um, and you can find tutorials for how to do that stuff online if you, if you really want to get started with Angular. And Angular is a super cool thing. Um, and if you're serious about being a, a web developer, front end developer uh, in any kind of capacity, either just even for your own things or, or you want it as a job, definitely learn Angular. Um, you know, maybe get started with jQuery, but, but keep Angular in the back of your mind. It's, it's a good one. Um, or again, React, Redux, Vue, um, and once you know any of them, it's pretty easy to move to the others, and you know, it just depends on, you know, every company uses something different. I mean, they're all good, <laughs> um, except Vanilla JS. <laughs> very, very infrequently will you will you be coding in Vanilla JS, um, but it's an interesting comparison and a good. It's helpful to know how things are working under the hood, um, especially if one things break. So. Uh, so anyway, there you go. I hope that these are all um, interesting. Um, again, I have uh, the code, if you want the code, up online. I typed it up slightly differently this time, probably. I had already done all of this. Um, it's all up on GitHub. Um, so anyway, if the code looks slightly different, that's why. Maybe I called it, you know, not game state, and I probably didn't call the person Abby. I think I just did Ben. Um, so the code is going to be slightly different, but whatever. If functions are in different orders, you're smart, you'll figure it out. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope this is interesting. Uh, and if you have other questions about doing things, I enjoy making these videos. I don't know why. I like talking about code. 
Um, so I don't know, this came like almost a week later than it should have, uh, but yeah, I'll do it eventually, I guess is what I'm saying, but, but, but maybe don't count on me to, to make a video the very next hour or something. <laughs> that, that won't work. Or at all. I mean, right, I mean, to be honest, right, I do have a life and I, you know, I got other stuff to do. I got to work on poppy seed pets, got to go to work, got to do all these other things. So, so I can't guarantee I'll make you a video, but, but this is a thing I'm interested in doing. So, so I very well might, and that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, so anyway, thanks again, uh, and goodbye.